Hello and welcome back to the Gorilla Biker and today what we're going to be doing on the GSX-R is changing the oil and oil filter. The reason this is important to do is, it might seem obvious, but that bike was sitting a long time and the oil that's in it is probably sludge. Um, now I forgot to do an intro <laughs> the day I actually did the oil, so I'm doing this actually a couple of days later, but um, what I did was I heated up the bike, uh, which I didn't show because you've seen the bike running enough, I assume, by now. Um, and I just drained the oil out and took out the oil filter. The oil, like you'll see, was tar. Um, and also later on, uh, today, we're going to change the coolant because the coolant has probably also just gone to crap. So, yeah, let's get to it. So now that the Suzuki runs again and could be wrong up to temperature. It's time to drain the oil and the oil drain plug in this is like in between the headers at the very bottom. So let's not let's let's try not burn myself. Yeah, it's a 21. Who knew? Oh that made me nervous. This bolt has not been open in a long, long time. That is why I wanted to heat it up, that is absolute sludge, not oil. That is nasty, nasty stuff. So surprisingly the oil isn't actually as, as absolutely, you know, from the last period of the dinosaurs as I thought it would be. It's it's serviceable, you know, it's, it's liquid. <laughs> it being liquid is a bonus. Uh, unfortunately, my tool and stuff did end up my big tool did end up in the oil, so I'm going to get that out and clean it. And, but I'm actually going to leave that drain for a while. The first thing, no, not the first thing, the next thing I need to do is take off the oil filter. Uh, so let's do that. So the oil filter is right there. Um, I'm going to try and get it so that, you know, on any oil that comes out here, it kind of falls in here as well. Just wait. Moving that, that should do it. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna switch back to the other camera. I just wanted to show you where it was. It's right there by the headers. And obviously to do the oil on the Jigsaw, it's uh, fairing, lower fairings off job. Definitely lower fairings off. What I'm gonna to try to use is this bad boy. Because again, this has been on there a long time. And that is working. See, sometimes I'm not a complete idiot. That actually worked. <laughs> Oh. Sometimes, I said, sometimes I'm not a complete idiot. The beauty of this bike is like, this is how well looked after this thing was. This looks like pretty new. Other than the dents I just put in it. Like this, this was not, this was not a mistreated bike. You know what I mean? Definitely, definitely not. Um, which makes me go, it's just, I just can't leave all that stuff in it and on it because it's been in there far too long. So it kind of had to come out. But in the grand scheme of things, that oil is actually like pretty good. It's actually better than I expected, so that's that is good news. The first the first kind of half positive news I had on this bike to be honest, because a lot of the time um, I just I just keep getting kind of shafted with stuff, so I'm pretty happy with that. I am pretty pretty happy with that. So I know people are gonna ask me what I'm putting back into it, and it's this. I'm using Liquamoly 10W40 Street. Um, it's it's what came recommended. Um, I looked up the specs for for the temperatures I'll be riding in, and, and this seems perfect to be honest. So that's what I'm using, and also a classic high flow air filter filter for it, uh, which I'm not actually sure where it is, but that's that's what's that's what'll be going on to it. So not not too bad, not too bad all round. But uh, yeah, that's that's that. Next, what I want to do is drain the coolant. So I just have to find something to drain the coolant into, but uh, that's the next, that has to come out too because it's manky. Putting back on the filter is really simple. Sorry, Luna. <laughs> she cat me out because she wants to go to bed, so I'm gonna have to stop recording soon. <laughs> if you can't hear it, she sounds so sad. I'm sorry, Luna. But that is easy as for putting back on the oil filter. Now we have a nice new one on there, which which is important. I know a lot of people think that oil filters are often a bit, you know, overkill or whatever, but I 
I don't. I think I change it every time I change the oil, uh, no matter what the vehicle is. Oil filter changed. Um, I'm gonna get the sump plug back in with a new, nice new copper washer and fill up with oil. Uh, one thing what I'm gonna show you is on this sump plug, you can see the crush washer is actually like fully, fully crushed. So without stabbing yourself in the fingers, yeah, you wanna get that off there. And that's just someone who probably reused this one way more than it was supposed to. Like really, you should nearly change these every time. I often don't because I forget to buy ones, but that, how can you see that? That is absolutely welded on there. So I'm gonna have my work cut out to get it off, but that has to come off uh, for a new one to go on because that is not gonna give a good seal again. And I'm also gonna check, is there, um, a second one already on there, maybe that's how they crushed, crushed it so much, just didn't realize there was still one there. As I suspected, as you can see right there, um, the two washers have pulled apart, so someone actually did put two washers onto this, and then just squanched them together, which is why they're so unwilling to come off. But anyway, I will be victorious. So as promised, uh, it's off. There's the, the proof right there, just in case you don't believe me. Um, what I actually had to do is get a, just get a screwdriver and actually hammered it through the washer because I knew the washer would be soft so the only thing you want to do there obviously when you're when you're doing that is just be really careful that you don't damage your your threads on your bolt if you want to use the bolt again because obviously you know the hammer will do the same damage to the threads as it will to to your washer but there you go it's off so new copper washer going on nice new and shiny and now it is going on the bike yay Look at it, look at the little bolt celebrating with its lovely new copper washer. So, in all seriousness, that oil is not as bad as I thought it would be. I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty murky and thick. Um, definitely did not want to stay in the bike any longer. But that's why I wanted to get the bike running, just so people understand is, you know, I wanted to heat this up to get it out. Because if I hadn't heated it and, you know, cycled the engine, this, this stuff could have been sitting absolutely anywhere. Um, it doesn't look like anything was growing in it. No metal came out on the sump plug because it is a magnetic sump plug, thankfully. Um, so this actually looks okay. So, yay. Good news, sort of. Maybe. <laughs> yay. So I almost forgot to show you. Ooh, dusty. Show you me filling the oil. So I'm putting in my. This is my phone. My liquid molly here. Uh, into this boy here on the, the right hand side of the jigsaw and you know it's mine because it has the orange vacuum hoses yeah boy um, but yeah just gonna pour in the oil now and what you want to watch for is on the side glass when when she gets up towards the high mark you want to stop and then start the engine until the ah nearly dropped my phone until the bike heats up and then when the bike is heated up, you check there again, and you'll probably need to top it up a little bit. Easy peasy. So there we go. Um, you can see the side glasses just about full there. Also, if you're wondering why I'm using my phone camera, it's actually like so much better in low light uh, conditions than my main camera. That's why that's why I've decided to use it. Uh, one thing I always say is, is um, little by little, in, inch the oil in little by little because. It's a lot easier put some in than take it out. That's that's important. If if you if you add too much in, you have to drain it into like a clean container somehow, and it's ju it just don't do it. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Yeah, this phone's way better in low light. I might have to use my mobile phone more often. Okay, so on this side of the bike, there's a couple of things to to remove now. My coolant um, is this is crap to be honest. So what I'm going to do first is just pop open this 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 big guy um, because you you can just go around taking everything off, but like you don't need to do it one at a time. You know what I mean? So you can even just like take off this first. And to be honest, what I'm probably going to do is uh, take take the whole the whole this off. <laughs> I'm bad at words and try change some of these lines because they're looking pretty pretty rough as is a lot as was a lot of things in this bike it's getting there it's getting there also what i did earlier is i lubed the cables um for the throttle because they were sticking which was making it hard to tell uh, was my bike running okay so if you'd like to see that let me know so one of these 
is actually the screw that holds on the um, idle adjuster, which is there. And I put that back on, so I'm going to take it off again. But anyway, that is a really pleasant noise. I'll clean that up too. I got, uh, oh, that's a, that's a weird, oh, it's for there. Okay, it's for the cables. Don't lose this, it's for cables. Um, I got a Dremel and I was hoping I could get my brakes, you know, at least partially done today. But as it turns out, so there's your idle adjuster there. As it turns out, um, I didn't order the, the, oh, words are hard. I didn't order the polisher kit, so I've ordered one of them now. Anyway, now we'll take this off. This, this is, Nasty. So I'm hoping hey Cleo. There's Cleo the cat over there. I'm hoping that um I should be wearing gloves by the way, because apparently coolant is not good for you. Um I'm hoping that I'll be able to change this with another orange line and then just get orange lines everywhere. I think that'd look better. I don't know what I changed this one because it looks like it's far away, but we'll have a look. Cleo girl, you can't stay in here. There she is. Get out of here. Stop trying to make friends with Maggie. So anyway, there is the reservoir drained. Oh, there we go. I'm just gonna leave that to one side because it's easier. I'm gonna put on gloves because coolant is bad, so we're gonna do that. Now, my super safety gloves are on. And next what we're gonna do so I'm just gonna pop the camera off here. So what I'm doing now is opening, I don't know, can you see that there? There's a clamp right there, you wanna open that. And that's also held on by a cable tie here. So you wanna open that. And what I also probably have to open this one here. Um, uh, but before you open this, what you wanna do, and this is just so it actually drains properly, is you want to pop the cap on your radiator. Now just be careful when you do this because obviously you might still have some heat and pressure in there, which I probably do. I should grab a cloth so I don't burn myself. There you go. So just have that open because it relieves pressure. And you see straight away, I don't know did you hear that on the camera, but we got more fluid out when I popped that open. The good news here is uh, it didn't look like, um, you know, when I did this that there was any rust in the radiator, which is, is really important. Um, like I, I would, I could and would replace, I could and would replace the rad if I had to. Uh, I just really would rather not before I go, oh, I think I found it. Okay, are we still recording? We are. I think the bolt is like down under there. Uh, if it is, I'll let you know. I'm just gonna try to open it now. It's like a big, probably JIS. Oh, that really does not want to turn. I think like all of these are pretty much welded in place from years of being there. I hope you got that on camera because I just made a mess. Oh, yeah, we got it. Yeah, I made a mess. <laughs> but, but the rat is drained. <laughs> and probably the water pump now too. Uh, sometimes I wonder about me. I am, I am impressively stupid sometimes. Oh, it is horrendously cold in here. <laughs> it's after dinner, it's really cold. Anyway, so. It looks like all of that is actually pretty, pretty okay. I think it's drained. Obviously, the ideal way to drain this is to, you know, drain it properly. Um, but it looks to me, you know, like, it's gonna be drained about the same as if I got off that lower bolt or not. And I don't think I'm gonna get that lower bolt off. I think what I'm gonna do now is start to put it back together. Change this out for a nice orange. Uh, 
and if I can and see where we go from there. So I just need to trace that and see how we do. So that kind of crispy line runs all the way over um, to here, the top of the rad. So that's actually pretty okay to, to route. It's cause what I'll do is I'll pull it through. It just goes behind the frame there beside the engine. I'm uh, pretty sure it's right there, maybe. Or maybe not, it seems to be lower down. Either way, oh yeah, there it is. So it's lower down there, clipped on, clipped on right there, um, and then just runs in and across. So not too bad, not too bad to change. So I think it's worth changing. Um, I just need to make sure I have a good long length of my orange vacuum hose left before I do that. Um, the top piece, oh, top black piece that I accidentally just dropped out. I think all that is is an overflow hose. You know, if you like get too much uh, pressure in the system, eh? And then it all leaks out. My phone is being annoying, I forgot to put it on silent. But anyway, there you go. So then we're gonna get coolant back in the bike. Okay, so that lower bolt, I'm pretty certain that's the one. Um, that is used to actually drain the water pump. There's a little bit of liquid left in there if I rock the bike ever so slightly. Um, but I'm just gonna have to leave it there because that uh, bolt, every time I try to touch it, it strips. Um, so I'm just gonna let it be. I'm gonna let it be. It's, uh, you know, it's living its own life. It's happy. It's happy where it is. So uh, who am I to question it, you know? I'm also definitely gonna have to get something for this because this, like it feels okay. It's just not great, but uh, Unfortunately, um, I, my vacuum hose is just a little bit too uh, inner diameter wise, it's a bit too small, so it's not going to fit. It is what it is, it's not that big a deal. It would have been nice to be able to do it, but you know. Good news is, and this is really good news, um, no crud or anything came out of uh, the rad when I was doing it. Um, like longer term, longer term is going to have to be more work done with this bike, changing all these crappy ass hoses and stuff need to be done um and to be honest it's a bike it's a bike that i'm actually confident working on because it's actually pretty it's pretty okay and you know it, the engine can come out pretty easily if i need to it's a bike that you know i'm confident to take apart now uh so i'm not worried if anything crazy pops up i'm not worried that i can't fix it and that's a really nice place to be with your own motorcycle. So, you know, we, we got fresh oil in it. We're getting fresh coolant in it today. It starts, it runs, it starts pretty good now. It runs, um, I just need to get the polishing bits for, bits for the brakes. Then I can do the brakes. Um, I need to take out the forks, you know, hopefully this weekend maybe and do them. And then you'll see that soon enough. And then it's ready to go. So like the clutch cable, I'll lube that up. Um, I'll lube that up in one of the next videos. And once the clutch cable is lubed up, you know, it feels good, it feels okay, so I don't think I need to change it just yet. It is at the very end of its, its useful life adjustment wise, so I probably will have to do it soon. But you know, other than that, we're looking pretty good. I'm actually, I'm really excited. I'm really excited about it, to be honest, so. Uh, we're getting there, we're getting there, and I am happy that we are. So one thing you don't wanna to forget to put back on is just this top one. It's not under pressure, so it doesn't have a clamp, it just pulls off. Because all that is is your uh, your over your over pressure. I should probably leave it at the front like that. There you go. All it is is your over pressure, so you don't want to um, you know you don't want to have that in a bad old spot. So you can see here you have a full and a lower mark. So you want to top this up. You also need to top up your radiator. So what I'll do, I'll top this up to full first, and then we'll top up the radiator. Uh, so the coolant I'm using is Motel Inugel uh, Expert. Probably pretty much the same stuff that came out of it. And what I would recommend is, I bought lots of these little jugs. Um, they're really, really handy for, you know, not only filling up stuff like this, but also they're really handy for filling up you know, the likes of your shocks and stuff as well. And the beauty of these jugs, and this is important, the thing about filling radiators, I'm just gonna move the camera around. The thing about filling radiators is you wanna do it slowly um, because otherwise you get air. So that is not something you want. 
and these jugs kind of make you pour it slowly. It was gurgling and that's the air coming back up through the lines. So the slower you fill it, the better. Um, Cause the slower you fill it, the more you let that air escape. So that's what you want to do. And then you want to fill the radiator right all the way up to the neck. So get your cap back on. When your cap is back on, the next important thing to do, right, is you need to get all the air bubbles out of um, the bike and the whole system. To do that, uh, what you need to do is start your bike, let it get up to temperature, or close to it anyway, uh, blip the throttle a few times, and that'll just kind of force the air bubbles back up out of it. And you can also check for leaks then while you're at it. You know, I haven't really done much, so there shouldn't be any leaks, um, but it's just a good way to check. So yeah, it starts on first turn of the key now. I'm pretty happy with that. So once you're up to temperature, what you want to do is blip the throttle a few times uh, between like, you know, five and 6,000 RPM. And that should help you get those air bubbles out. So I'm just going to blip the throttle a few times now. Now, not only is it pedaling like kitten, uh, it has all new coolant in it. The level is still good here, which is a good sign. Um, yeah, to be honest, I think I think that's good. I think that's pretty much good to go. The last thing you need to check is um, on the right hand side, or you know, the, the radiator side of your bike. Um, what you wanna do is, is pop that cap open again and just top it up because any air, <clears throat> any air that was in the system will just kind of be forced up to here. It's the top point in the system. So that's what you want to check. But again, just grab a rag or a cloth or something when you're opening that. Don't burn yourself. And if you do burn yourself, don't blame me. It's your own fault. That still looks um, pretty full to me. I'm just going to double check. Oh yeah, full. Okay, so that is the video for today. Um, one thing to remember, uh, especially with coolant, um, just be careful. Coolant, coolant is not good for you, as far as I know. I mean, I've heard it's not good for you. Do I? I don't actually know is it good for you. Definitely don't drink it. Definitely, definitely don't drink it. It's only for bikes to drink. And they don't even drink it. They just kind of like do that. They mouthwash it. Like, yeah, I'm not going to keep doing that. Well, anyway, that's what they do. They don't really swallow it. They just kind of circulate it around their innards. And, I suppose it's their blood. It's kind of like their blood, so is their oil. But anyway, so the bike, uh, it starts and runs good now. You can hear that. It starts pretty quick on the button. Um, and honestly, the oil actually helped a lot with that. Uh, it was a bit rough until I fixed the oil. Um, if you're wondering why I haven't finished up the holes, to plug these again, because all this has to come back out. You have to actually pop the carbs up in order to get on the balancer kit. Um, so I have to do that, and the best way to do it is to you know, balance the tank up high. That's why the tank is still there as well. I haven't, I haven't finished all that because it's just it's jumping the gun. So what have we done? We've changed the oil, we've changed the oil filter, we've changed the coolant. Um, honestly, we're in a really good position. This bike is now mechanically good because spark plugs have been changed. Um, you know, all that stuff's been changed. I've lubed the throttle cables. I need to lube the clutch cable. I'll do that in the next video as part of whatever else I'm doing. Um, then really all we're looking at is rebuilding the forks. I have all the stuff to do that here. Um, they are upside down forks, so a little bit harder, but we'll get it done. Uh, redo the brakes. I'm just waiting on something in order to actually clean the caliper pieces themselves. I have the rebuild kits for that as well. I have braided brake lines from HEL. Uh, I have brake fluid. I have brake pads. That can be done. And yeah, then we can get this bike out on the road for a quick spin. The tires are shocking. They're, they're you know, 13 plus years old. So 
ideally I should change them. So you know, if anyone if anyone knows a tire company that wants to sponsor me or like you know, give me some freebies to test because I am broke. I've spent I've spent a lot of money on this bike, but we'll do a breakdown of that as well. That's coming up soon. But yeah, if you watch, thank you very much for watching. Um, if the coolant section of this video or the oil section of this video help, helped you, uh, please let me know down in the comments. I really do like seeing when my videos help people. Um, please like and subscribe. Um, you know, subscribers have fallen off a cliff, or new subscribers, I should say, have fallen off a cliff recently. YouTube analytics tells me, which I don't think really matters, but it makes me it makes me a sad Michael. So uh, you know, if you know anyone who likes bikes or jixers or Honda CBFs or Super Magnus, send them my way, send them my way, it's all appreciated. And uh, until the next time, thank you very much for watching. Adios. Oh, I forgot to thank my patrons. I am a terrible person. Yeah, if you stayed this long, um, also I have a Patreon if you want to support builds on the channel or just the general upkeep of my growing bike collection. Uh, you can do that there, or if you just want to support me creatively, that's cool. Uh, you don't have to, absolutely no pressure. All of my videos come to YouTube. Um, the patrons get like discounts on merch, um, and they get early access to the videos when I can. But there's, it, honestly, the people who support me on Patreon do it because they want to support me, which is cool. Because they don't read, really, they really don't get much. Like you know, uh, you know that that's it. There's also a Discord there and stuff like that. But anyway, um, so yeah, huge thanks uh, to those people who are there because. Uh, your support your support means a huge amount to me. Um, I know I don't go into it very often, but I'm going in this video because I've talked about it. Uh, yeah, your support means an absolutely massive amount to me. It really, it really does help. I know you might not see it, but it really does help. Um, yeah, so thanks. And lastly, outro crew. Which one of my bikes sounds the best? Because I think I think this bike sounds very nice. I think carb carbureted inline four. Sounds really nice, uh, but the, the Super Magnus sounds fantastic as well, so uh, chef's kiss for that. Chef's kiss for, for the Super Magnus, it's magnificent. And lastly, outro crew, um, this hat is uh, for Weems Motor Co. Uh, I don't know the guy, uh, he just seems awesome. He built a really cool bike that he's uh, auctioning off, or raffling, raffling off I should say, he's raffling it off. Uh, and all proceeds, like every single penny, he's not getting a penny out of it, all proceeds are going to a charity uh, called Forgotten Angels, which is for children who've aged out of the foster care system, which is cool. Uh, obviously not based in Ireland, Randon, I just think it's it's a really cool idea. Um, so if you want to buy a raffle ticket to support that or a piece of his merch, because the hat's really nice, and you know I like hats, I have many hats. Um, then you can do that as well on uh, weemsmotorco.com, I think it is. Uh, you'll find them on Instagram anyway, weemsmotorco. But yeah, there you go. We are getting a closer with the jigsaw. Imagine I had this ready for Christmas. That'd be my Christmas present. I just, I don't see how I'm going to afford tires and everything else I still need to buy. <sighs> this video is probably too long, but I'm also going to say, for all the people suggesting, you know, like fork changes and and uh, brake caliper changes. Um, shout out to Shelby Daytona. Um, he's friends with Chaitry Surgeon. He's 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 given me a few hints and tips. I really appreciate it. I want to change the forks to modernize them. I want to change the calipers to modernize them. It's just not an option right now, uh, financially. But it is something that's going to be done down the line. I really want to get a HEL master cylinder for the front. I would love to get HEL uh, calipers for the front. Hopefully at some stage. Uh, yeah, there's lots of upgrades that are to come on this bike, so if, if you know, if you want to see what they are, just stay around. <laughs> so, that's all it is. Alright, I'm going to shut up now. This video has been probably far too long. Good luck. <coughs> Good luck. All the fumes in here are probably going to kill me one day. But I will die happy. <laughs>